Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, welcome to Old News, the programme where we have a look at some of the news stories of today through the eyes of yesterday. There's nothing new under the sun, as they say. And my eye was drawn this week to the story on the Max Radio website that small change coins could be withdrawn from circulation and a new rounding system implemented. Not going down particularly well at the moment in all quarters, and it just made me wonder whether similar sort of ideas have happened before. A quick trawl through, and I go straight the way back to 1847 and 1848, when there was talk of new coinage all over the Manx papers, which in those days wasn't just concentrating on Manx news, but news from further afield around England and the world. In the Alaban Times, Saturday, May the 8th, 1847, in a letter published in the Morning Post of Tuesday, Dr Bowring explains the use of a new coin which the Chancellor of the Exchequer, in the UK of course, last week, consented to have struck. It was my object to interfere as little as possible with the names or values of the existing coinage, this writer, and to show that by dividing the pound sterling into 1,000 farthings and issuing two silver coins, one representing the one-tenth of the pound sterling, a hundred farthings, the other the one hundredth, ten farthings, a perfect gold and silver decimal coinage would be ready at our hands. The only alteration of value would be to the extent of 4% in the copper coinage by making the farthing the one one thousandth instead of, as now, the one nine hundred and sixtieth part, you keeping up, of the pound sterling. As the new coin, which I propose to call a queen, is about to be issued, representing two shillings, 24d, as that were, one-tenth of the pound sterling. The only additional coin required is the one-tenth of the two shillings and four and ten d to complete the decimal currency. The penny would probably hereafter superseded by a coin of five farthings. The issue of the Queen will lay the foundation of a sound decimal system, it was claimed, in 1847. In the Alabama Times, the 8th of May, Dr Bowring seems to have in our view the system will be similar as regards to its two inferior denominations, which prevail in France and Russia, Holland and America, whilst it will be greatly superior to them all in the brevity derived from the possession of a unit of such high value as the pound sterling. In the new notation... Five shillings, fourteen, five pounds, fourteen shillings and sixpence would be written five point seven two five pounds and four pounds, three shillings and fourpence would be four point one six six pounds, etc. The early closing movement has led, we perceive, to the banking community. In the atlas the, from the proposed decimal currency, an article saying we congratulate the country in general and in particular all the hard-working merchants, bankers, shopkeepers, clerks and accountants on the result of Dr Bowring's motion for the adoption of a decimal currency. Remember, this is 1847. The Chancellor of the Exchequer offers no objection to the measure in his own part and only delays to carry it into full effect in deference to the prejudices of the public and their slothful reluctance to change troublesome old customs for easy new ones. Sounding familiar? He has, however, expressed his willingness to issue a two-shilling piece as a commencement of a decimal system. It's always been there one way or another. And I rather like this little piece from the Manx Sun, the 8th of May in 1847. New coin. There has been talk about a new coin in the House of Commons in order that we may gradually reform our currency according to decimals. Tenths will certainly be more convenient calculation for the church as well as for as well as for Her Majesty's subjects in general. Again, the tenth of a farthing will, in a little time, be most convenient coin for subscribers to the repeal fund. Mr Shield proposes that the new two-shilling piece should be called a royal, the one shilling a half royal, and sixpence a quarter of a royal. We would like more familiar terms, it's suggested. This is an article in Punch. For instance, why not call the two-shilling a hog, the one shilling a pig, and the sixpence a a suckling. There's no answer to that, is there? But it's good to see humour was there, alive and kicking. And whenever you change any form of monetary system, 
there's going to be problems. It's all old news. See you next time. Cheerio. You're going to be yesterday's news.